Hi everyone, um, my name is Aicha Bash. I only have 15 minutes, so I'll try to make a quick intro and then we will jump into building apps with Teams Toolkit. I'm a senior cloud advocate at Microsoft. I'm based in Dubai and I love building solutions across Microsoft Cloud using Graph, Teams and Azure. If you are interested in learning more what sort of uh, content I'm working on or the solutions, you can follow me on LinkedIn, Twitter or uh, GitHub. You can also check out the solutions there. Today, uh, we have a specific agenda uh, for building a solution using Team Toolkit. First, I'll just show you uh, what Team Toolkit looks like on Visual Studio, and then uh, we will create a notification bot using Visual Studio Team Toolkit for Visual Studio. We will run the bot on Teams, and then I'll quickly walk you through how code piece work, and then I'll leave you with a couple of resources, and then we will jump into the next presentation. Um, okay, so I think next is just jumping into the demo. Let me bring uh, Visual Studio. First off, if you go to Visual Studio installer, you will have to install a um, web development package and uh, you will have to check Teams development uh, individual component to make sure that you have Teams uh, toolkit is coming uh, with, the, with the web development uh, package. If when you install Teams toolkit, uh, whenever you want to create a new project, let's say that we are creating a new project right now. When you type Teams, you will have to see Microsoft Teams app as one of the project template options. I'll select this and meanwhile, we're actually creating a notification bot. I'll just keep the name as it is, but you can change the name, you can change the location, and you can also change the uh, solution name. We can create this. When you're creating a Teams app, there are a couple of options available. First one is notification bot, which is for the scenarios where you want to get information from APIs or let's, it, I think the basic one I can think of is the weather uh, API. Um, for example, you want to receive notification every morning at 9 a.m. Uh, how is the weather like today in your own own location? You can use notification bot to get this not get this information from different APIs. There are different trigger types. The trigger can be uh, HTTP trigger. You can use ASP.NET Core Web API or Azure Functions to do that. There is also different version of receiving that notification either when there is information coming from the API. So you will send that notification uh, information to the user or you can set a timer, as I mentioned in the weather bot. Every morning at 9 a.m. you will get this information so that you will use the timer. You can also build both of them in one single bot by using notification bot, HTTP and timer trigger. Um, you can also go for a comment bot. Today we will focus on notification, but I will I will quickly summarize you how the rest of them works. Co comment bot is a great scenario if you have question and answer uh, type of app. Uh, you can build different types of questions and answers. I think comment bot goes really great when it uh, with uh, cognitive services Q and A Q and A Maker API. You can actually convert your website Q and A, or if you have an Excel sheet with questions and answers, you can just use the cognitive services. API and um, call the API from comment bot and it will drive all of the questions and answers through the comment bot on Teams. Tab is basically the surface we uh, use. It works like a web application, but it runs on Microsoft Teams. If you have, um, if you want to, let's say, run uh, group uh, tasks or if you want to build a dashboard inside a team channel, I think tab is a great option, great surface for us to um, check internally on Teams. And messaging extension is um, the extensions for the, um, if, you, if you want to compose a message um, by using adaptive course, for example, messaging extensions are great actions. You can directly compose um, all of the cards inside the messaging extension, uh, in, inside the message, and then you can run, uh, send the message directly in the chat. Um, there are different ways you can uh, directly create a uh, directly send the adaptive cards. You can either use search in the messaging extension or you can use the chat message functionality. Um, today we will focus on notification bot. And for today's scenario, I will use ASP.NET Core Web API. But if you're more comfortable with Azure Functions, you can just go with Azure Functions option and you can try that locally as well. 
let's create this and then first we will try to run the app and I will show you how it works in uh, on Teams. And after that, I will just walk you through the project and the code piece. Uh, first off, when, when I created the project, um, as you see on the right side, we have the project, uh, we have the solution itself, and it comes with a really nice text file. That means that when you are trying this for the first time, you will have some guidance even without this presentation. Um, so first off, to run this project, we will need NGROC, some sort of tunneling. Um, this functionality, I should start by saying that Team Toolkit is available in both Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. Uh, in this sample, we are using Visual Studio and .NET. Um, for the Visual Studio Code, Team Toolkit doesn't require NGROC. For Visual Studio version, we still need a tunneling in the background to run the project. I will start with by just running uh, NGROC. I have already NGROC over here opened. I install it. If you didn't install it yet, you can just use this link to go ahead and install it. I need to, as you see in the second step, I need to run NGROC HTTP uh, 5130. I'll copy this and uh, paste it in my NGROC and I'll run it on the Different screen. What? Um, just one second. I'll have to make sure that. Oh, okay. I have to make sure that it's actually open. Wait. I need to rerun Ngrok. Apologies for repeating the same step. I don't know why, but I copied the run piece as well. I think I'm just rushing because I have 15 minutes. That's all fine. Um, okay, Ngrok is over here. I'll just copy paste Ngrok HTTP 5130. And I'll bring this back over here. The second step for us is to right click to the project and prepare Teams app dependencies. I'll right click to my project and then I will go to Teams Toolkit and click on Prepare Teams App Dependencies. This will automatically create some of the dependencies for us. And if you don't have M365 Devo uh, Developer Program account, this is actually the test tenant uh, you can get freely from the developer program. Um, I'm just using the test tenant we created from Microsoft 365 developer program. If you have all the permissions in your company account or work uh, or school account, uh, you're fine. You can just use your uh, own account. But if you don't have all the permissions or set up for testing Teams apps, I highly recommend you to go ahead and create a free testing tenant in the developer program. This one is the one I created, and I'm going to use this account for creating all the dependencies. I click continue, and you can actually check what sort of things Teams Toolkit is running in the background. For example, it's creating bot code provider. It is also generating AD app for Teams bot. It is creating app manifest behind the scenes. So we don't have to go ahead and create app manifest, uh, or we don't have to register an app in Active Directory. It's all done by the um, Teams toolkit when we prepare all of the dependencies. OK, so we are fine. We just completed all of the dependencies, and now it's time to press F5 or just go ahead and click on the green button and run the project. Let's quickly run the project. And the next step will be triggering the bot just to get a response back. And we will use PowerShell for that in the example. It's guiding us how to run the uh, query and then get the notification in the bot. Let's see our bot on Microsoft Teams first and then we will um, invoke web requests in the API slash notification and hopefully get a response back from the bot. OK, so now my uh, app should be running. Once it's ready, it will pop up a browser. Yep. And I will have to log into Microsoft Teams. It already have a login hint, so I don't have to do that. It will log into Microsoft Teams for me and then pop up my notification bot app. Okay, so 
our app is ready, I will just click add. And this will bring me a private chat with bot and myself. That means that our bot will be ready to test and debug. And once we have our bot ready, the next step is definitely triggering the API so that bot will bring us something. It will show us something. Um, so for that, as you remember, in Visual Studio Code, it was suggesting us to use um, PowerShell to invoke web request. I have a PowerShell open over here. I will just copy paste this and see if we will get any notification on Teams. Okay, yeah, we got the notification. We first have adaptive card with a title, a company information, description, and a button, which guides us to adaptivecards.io. That means that whenever there is a AP, whenever we trigger an API, we can actually get the data and we can show the data with uh, an adaptive card, which will make it look prettier. Let's quickly check the code how this thing works. As you see here, we are triggering API slash notification. That means that we must have a controller over here, notification controller.cs. So whenever we are calling API slash notification, that means that we are actually reading the adaptive card file path, which is under resources. It's the adaptive card called notification default.json. It's under here. As you see, we have a default adaptive card with a text block um, which with for title. We have text block for app name and description. And finally, we have a button with ac action open URL. You can create your own adaptive card by just going to adaptivecards.io. There's a designer there. You, there. There's a designer you can use to design your own adaptive card, how you want to make it look and feel uh, by dragging and dropping. And then at the end, it will generate you a, a JSON file. Let's get back to notification controller really quickly. Um, so here is the place whenever we get a invoke in the API slash notification, we go to post async and we start reading the adaptive card template over here. As you can see, adaptive card uh, file path we read on top. And after that, we are basically sending the adaptive card by just generating a new adaptive card. We are filling the information over here. That means that the adaptive card you create is reusable. You can just reuse the same adaptive card to send different messages to the end user, or you can use different ones for different purposes. And finally, at the end, we just uh, send adaptive card uh, and we show the adaptive card on screen as a message. You can totally change the post. Uh, basically, you can change the response of the bot. Um, you don't have to send adaptive card. You can do different things. In here, we're just showing you how basically you can call an API and get a response from bot. There are different scenarios you can try out. And one of the great uh, examples Uvesa mentioned at the beginning of this call is the stock bot notification scenario that my colleague Gary prepared. It's available in the dev blogs. I highly recommend you to go ahead and check out if you're looking for a tutorial type of learning. And let me quickly wrap up by sharing a couple of resources in general about Teams Toolkit. We have a documentation about Teams Toolkit overview, installation guidelines, and uh, how you can create your very first app by using Teams Toolkit in on Visual Studio, and some of the FAQ for uh, Teams Toolkit. I think these slides are available in the main um, slide deck that's uh, puts together, so you can go ahead and check the links in the main deck. If you have any questions, I will be available to answer uh, in the chat as well, or I don't know if you have any minutes to answer the questions, but I'll be available both in the chat and here uh, if there's any questions. Thanks, everyone. Excellent. Uh, excellent. I, I shared some really, really cool stuff. Let, let's, from a timing perspective, let's make sure that we, we go to build. Um, we we're rather early than late uh, with the recordings, but if there's any questions for Aisha, please use the chat as well. And as Aisha said, we'll we'll have in the blog post summary uh, around the community call, uh, we'll have all of the links, of course, listed there. Mm -hmm.